Good morning everyone, my name is Dr. Peter de Villiers and this is Gracie, my patient today. Uh, in today's video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a clinical exam on a dog. This is both for pet owners and vet students and it just gives you a good idea of how to assess the overall health and mental status of a dog and how you should go about doing that. This is a good thing to repeat every now and again to make sure your dog is healthy and if the dog is sick, for example, this will be a good way to determine what it might be wrong with the dog. Okay, so basically there's two ways that we're gonna go about doing this. It's first the hands-off exam and then the hands-on exam. So with the hands-off exam, I like to put the dog on the floor in the consult room, just allow it to walk around a bit, sniff the environment, and just to see what the mental status of the dog is. If the dog is running around, the tail wagging and being inquisitive, that's usually a sign that they are healthy and the mental status is good. But if they are very lethargic, lying around and not really active, that might point towards some other problem. Also, it's a good way to see the way that they move, if there's any signs of limping or panting or um, perhaps vomiting or diarrhea. This is just a good way to put the dog in a stress-free environment so that he or she can act as normal as they would at home. Alright, so we're going to put Gracie on the floor and then see what she does. Alright, Gracie, let's see what you do. Okay, so as you can see, she's wagging her tail, she's sniffing the floor, being inquisitive and everything, seeing if she can smell the other dogs that was here previously trying to find some food, trying to escape. Gracie, Gracie, go. You can see the way she's walking, there's no limping, she's wagging the tail, uh, the ears are back, she seems relaxed, might be a bit anxious, but not too severe. Gracie, Gracie, come here. It's always a good thing to offer them a cookie to see if they have a good appetite, and that just makes it a lot more of a re relaxing environment for them. We don't want them to be stressed unnecessarily because we need to get a full picture of what their mental status is. All right, so now that we are done with the hands-off exam, we can start with the hands-on exam. So usually we start with the three vitals, the heart rate or pulse rate, the respiratory rate and the temperature. So first off, the easiest one to see is the respiratory rate. You basically just monitor the dog's ability to breathe. So when the dog breathes in, the chest will expand. And when he breathes out, the chest will... will... Hey, you must be rousy. Then usually what I do is I time for about 15 seconds. I count the amount of breaths and then I multiply it by four to get the total amount of breaths per 60 seconds. The next thing, we evaluate the heart rate. So if you have a stethoscope, then you just put it underneath the left elbow. That's the easiest way. That is a good way to evaluate the heart rate and to detect any heart murmurs. If you don't have a stethoscope, then feel the pulse. So the best way to do that is just to put your index finger or your middle finger in the groin area and you'll feel the femoral artery uh, pumping blood and that would be the same as the heart rate. A good way to also determine if the dog has any cardiovascular disease for the vet students is if you listen to the heart and you feel the pulse. When the heart beats, it should also be a pulse rate. If there's a delay between the two, then that's usually a sign that there's uh, some sort of heart disease. Okay, so Gracie has a perfect heart. She's healthy in that sense. All right, so next we're gonna take the temperature. So we like to use the digital thermometers. You also get the mercury ones, but that's kind of old school and we don't use that anymore. So it's quite simple. You just switch it on, you insert it into the rectum, you wait for a couple of minutes until it beeps and then you take the reading. Okay, so this is sometimes a bit uncomfortable for the dogs, especially for the smaller ones. So you can just apply some lube or some baby cream to the tip of the thermometer just to make it a bit easier on them. All right, so you just lift up the abdomen, you switch on the thermometer, oopsie, and then you insert it into the rectum. As I said, it's a bit uncomfortable, not sore, but usually if you give them a cookie, they forgive you afterwards. And then you just wait until the thermometer takes its reading and gives a beep. Usually takes about 10 to 20 seconds. Okay. 
Okay, so you can hear the beeping sound and then you take the reading and it's 38.3 degrees Celsius, which is normal for a dog this size. Okay, so those are the three vitals, the most important things to assess. Next, what we like to do is we like to evaluate the hydration status levels. So best way to do that is to lift the skin on the top of the neck. When you lift it and you put it, it should go down immediately. Um, when a dog is dehydrated, the fluid underneath the skin will get absorbed into the vascular system and that will cause a delayed skin testing. So for example, if you lift it up and you release it, it will go slowly back to its normal position. So that's usually a sign of dehydration. If they get very dehydrated, the eye globes will also sink into the skull, but that's usually in a very severe form of dehydration. All right, so after you've done that, then we usually start from the front to the back and evaluate every body system. So for example, we'll start at looking, just looking at the face, seeing if there are any ocular or nasal discharge, if there's any infection in the eyes or the nose, and then the important thing is to lift up the lip to evaluate the gums. We want to see pink mucous membranes. If it's yellow, it might be a sign of some liver disease of tick bite fever. And if it's pale or white, they may, may be anemic. Okay, so what we also like to do is to determine the capillary refill time. So you lift the lip and you see the gums and then you just press down on it and you release. And you see the pinkish color should turn back to white quite quickly, usually within less than two seconds. And that's usually a sign that the vascular system is functioning normally. And then obviously we like to evaluate the teeth, the periodontal area to see if there's any signs of dental disease. Um, so basically we evaluate the plague and the tartar buildup. And if there's severe infection, you'll see a little red line on the bottom of the gums, indicating that there's inflammation and periodontal disease. All right, then we move on to the ears. So usually we'll just look inside the ears, see if we see anything abnormal, if there's any sores or pruritus, which is a reddish discoloration of the skin um, caused by irritation. You can sometimes smell the ears. I know it's weird, but we are vets and we do weird stuff like that, because that's usually an indication if there's any ear infection. It will basically smell like corn chips. And then in the veterinary clinic, we will use this tool to call an otoscope. Um, it's just to evaluate the inside of the ear canal to see if there are any ulcers or infection. It's just a good way to evaluate the ear canal's health. So it's good to have an assistant to just keep the dog busy. You lift up the ear, you insert the nozzle, don't go too deep. Just deep enough so you can evaluate the ear canal. And yeah, you're basically looking for any source or signs of infection. After we're done with this, I like to feel the lymph nodes. It's, there are two lymph nodes underneath the chin and then two lymph nodes on the, in front of the shoulders. Usually you won't be able to feel them, but if they are enlarged, for example, when they have signs of infection, you will feel two little bumps. Okay, next, we already listened to the heart. It's also a good idea to listen to the lungs. In order to evaluate if there are any abnormal lung sounds, for example, any lung crackles or wheezing sounds, which is usually an indication that there's a lower respiratory tract problem. Moving on to the back, just like to palpate the abdomen, see if we can feel anything abnormal. Most dogs will be a bit tense with this. Um, so yeah, it's not always easy to palpate all the organs. But if a dog is very painful, or if there's a foreign body, for example, then this will usually be quite evident when you press down here. They will kind of arch their back, and sometimes they may also yelp in pain. Then moving on to the back, there's also two lymph nodes in the inguinal area, and two lymph nodes behind the knees that you can evaluate. And then uh, basically the last thing is you can just lift up the tail, See if you see any abnormal fecal staining. For example, if a dog had diarrhea, you look at the color, the consistency, and you can also evaluate the anal glands to see if they are enlarged. Um, usually you can see that from the outside. Apart from that, you evaluate each one of the legs. So you just lift up the leg, look at the nails, see if the nails are very long, look underneath the feet, see if there's any signs of pruritus. And a good idea is also, especially if the dogs are slumping, to test the dog's range of motion to see if there is any pain present when flexing, extending the front limbs or the hind limbs as well as the hips. 
This is usually important in older dogs that might suffer from arthritis. Just a good way to evaluate the range of motion and to see if they are suffering from any pain. And then if you're done with this, just feel, just rub over the whole dog. See if you can detect any lumps or bumps um, in possible cancerous growths that you might need to perform a fine needle aspirate or if you're a pet owner, you might need to take your dog to the vet to check out. And then also just lift up the front paws and look at the, the tummy and the chest. Again, see if there are any signs of pruritus, inflammation of the skin and any signs of infection, open sores, um, just so you can get a proper overview of everything and to get a, a realistic idea of the dog's overall health. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more of these types of tutorials and you must all have a lack a day. I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.